Welcome to Bible study. God bless you tonight. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, I want you to come on in. Share it with your friends and your family. We here for Bible study tonight. Bless you, Mama P. Bless you, Nika Parker, Sister Smith. Come on, we're going to get into the word of God. Before we get started, you might as well clap your hands for a little while. Clap your hands. God bless you, Mother Missouri. We want to pray. Father God, we thank you for traveling mercies. We thank you for another night of Bible study. We pray right now, God, that you have your way in the midst of us. We pray right now that you saturate your, let your spirit saturate through every phone, every laptop, every tablet, and be in every atmosphere, God. We're at this Bible study because we want to be better Christians for you. We're not here for form or fashion, but we want to be better followers for you. So help us through your word tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. All right, listen, we're going to get right into Bible study tonight. And, and if you don't know, that was Clap Your Hands by Pastor David Wright, New York Fellowship Mass Choir. Listen, I want you to share this Bible study. Be a sharer tonight. Don't keep this word to yourself. All right, we, we're a little bit late, a little bit behind. Um, there was a horrible accident on the New Jersey Turnpike. And uh, I thank God that I missed the accident. It could have been me, but I saw it was a car flipped over on its side. I pray that all is well with them. Look like everybody was okay. But um, we still yet here. Thank God we're here. Listen, share this Bible study. Tonight, I want to talk about people. And, and y'all pray for me tonight because um, this Bible study has been, it's been tugging on my heart all day long. All day day long okay sister davis i'm praying for your husband god we pray that you touch brother john pastor john davis down in florida right now we're praying for john davis but uh, um i want to deal with this gifted people with no integrity i want to deal with that tonight gifted people with no integrity and um, we have to look at this situation in the body of Christ, especially because uh, the body of Christ has some of the most gifted people you'll ever see. 
Some of the most talented people are right there in our churches. Right there, even not just church, but in our neighborhoods, whatever. Some of the most talented people and gifted people blow opportunities because they have no character. Hallelujah. They have no integrity. It's one thing to get a job, but it's another thing to keep a job. Just about anybody can get the job, but in order for you to keep the job, the people got to like you. So for, for God, I don't care if nobody like me. If nobody like you, you won't get you won't have no opportunities. Hello, people got to like you. People got to find you find be love you got to be loving to people. So a lot of people can get in the door, but they don't stay there. They don't stay in the door because their character is flawed and their integrity is flawed. You see, and uh, Lord, help me tonight. A lot of people would even be able to get into good relationships, but they can't stay in the relationship. Because sooner or later, your character shows up, your integrity shows up. So you can get in a relationship, but the relationship won't last because your integrity ain't intact. Your character ain't intact. People don't want to talk about that kind of stuff, but we got to talk about that because there's been so many opportunities for the people of God that they blew. God opens doors for them, but they blew the opportunity because their character isn't right. Now, I, let me give you the Bible. Let's go to Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 16. Because in order for you to truly be blessed, while you're waiting on God to put you somewhere, let God work on you while you're waiting. You don't want to go somewhere and then you're not, you're, you're not able, you're not ready. Proverbs 18 Verse 16, a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. Listen, we say it like this. Your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. So God has gifted. You know some gifted folk in church, but it seems like they ain't doing nothing with their gift. Lord, talk, David, right? Talk. You know some folks that are gifted in your community. Let me put some of this chapstick on. I feel a little chappy. Loose head, loose head, Satan. That better. Your gift going to make room for you. But what happens? See, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. What happens when you get in the presence of great men? When you get in the presence of great men, Lord, help me to teach this tonight. Church antics don't work in front of great men. Billionaires are not um are, are not uh, uh um what's the word I'm look billionaires are not impressed by what you have on. Millionaires are not impressed. So what impresses somebody that already has everything is your integrity, your character. So your gift will make room for you. Thank you. And bring you before great men, but your integrity and your character. <laughs> will keep you in the room. That's why people who are gifted, but they don't have no integrity. They get opportunities, but they blow them as soon as they start opening their big mouth. Because God, you didn't, they didn't allow God to mature them. See, there's a lot of immature people that are gifted. There's a lot of immature people that are talented. All right? There's a lot, lot of uh, uh, immature, and, and listen, immaturity ain't got nothing to do with age. You can be 50 years old and immature. Some of these kids walking around here got more maturity some, than some grown folk. 
and your gift going to bring you there. But what good is the gift if it makes and it makes room for you and you get before great men and then you don't last in the room with great men because you don't know how to talk to folk. You don't know how to be loving and kind to people. It's time out for all this being nasty, stupid and acting crazy. God don't bless crazy. I want somebody to write that down there. God don't bless crazy. Amen. I said it. God don't bless crazy. And th th this is a fact. Men, man looks at the outward appearance, but God looks at the heart. You cannot fool God. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. And this was when Samuel, God had sent Samuel to find the king. And Samuel was looking all, you know, looking all over the place, looking at the outward appearance. But he told him, look, don't don't worry about what the outside looks like. But what's on the inside is what matters. And a lot of folks walk around here talking about God knows my heart. That's the bad thing. He does know your heart. He know the evil that's in your heart. So your smile ain't fooling nobody. If your heart is messed up and if your heart is contaminated, your integrity and your character is affected. Listen. First Samuel 16, verse seven. But the Lord said to Samuel, look not on his countenance, which is his appearance or on the height or of his stature, because I have rejected him. I have refused him for the Lord sees not as man sees for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Do you hear that? Don't look at how folks look at like on the outside. And I I'm sorry, y'all, but we at church, we have been trained backwards. We look at folks on how they're dressed. And we'll sit them according to what they got on. Yeah. We'll treat them a certain way according to their countenance. But never try in the spirit by the spirit. Never looking at the heart. That's why some folks that have sat on the front row really need to be sitting outside. And some folks that's in the back really need to be in the front because of what's in the heart that matters. And we have been trained to do that. I remember one time, uh, I, you know, I don't always wear a suit when I go to a church. And sometimes I, I just sit in the back, you know, I'm, I'm just chilling. And, and they brought me to the front. And there was another man up there suited up looking at me like, hey, you don't belong here. Like, 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 I, like I'm supposed to. And then he found out what my name was. And then he want to be buddy, buddy, cootie, cootie. No, no, no. Go on here. Because you're looking on my outward appearance before you knew who I was. And that's, we cannot do that. Integrity is not always seen by what somebody has on. Character is not always seen by what somebody has on. But it's what's on the inside. And if you if you can uh, 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 capture that, you, you'll be able to judge people's character instead of their countenance. And we got to be like God in that God ain't looking at uh, what you got on. He ain't looking at how tall you are. He ain't looking at your stature. God is looking at your heart. Amen. Let me get this scripture. Let me give you this scripture. And and y'all y'all pray for me. I'm trying to hurry on through here. You're gonna have to give me some extra time tonight. Let's go to Luke chapter six. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I wish all the all the church folks would uh, read it every day. I'm telling you, if I can get the saints from all over the world. To read this scripture and live by it every day, the world will be a whole better place. Listen, 
Luke chapter 6, verse 31. And it reads like this, and this is Jesus talking. And as would that men should do to you, do you also to them likewise. In other words, treat people how you want to be treated. Did you hear me? Treat people how you want to be treated. And nobody likes to be treated mean and nasty. So you can't go around treating people mean and nasty, talking about you saved and love the Lord. You can't go around talk about you 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 love God you 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 a child of the king. I'm gonna read the New Living Translation of that so you can get a better understanding, and it says like this: Do to others as you would like them to do to you. If I get everybody to live by that, do to uh, talk to people how you want them to talk to you. Because I found out, Sister Levette, I found this out, Sister Fisher. Mean and nasty people don't want people to be mean and nasty to them. A liar don't want to be lied to. God help me in here. So it's, it, it says, do to others as you would like them to do to you. That's integrity. That's your character. Sister Ali, am I talking right? Don't treat people because then some of them folks that are that that uh, 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 operate with in, no integrity. The minute you do it to them, they can't take it. The minute you show them them, they can't they can't take it. Some folks don't believe they act like that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I want you to share this because some folks need to hear this that ain't on here. I want you to share it with your mama, your cousin, your your your, your, your enemies. So they can't take it because all you're doing is showing them you. You looking in the mirror. And you got to be careful. Because there's no way you're going to sit here and say you're blessed and that God is going to favor you and you and, and, and you can't treat people right. And that's what I'm talking about. Your gift will make room for you. But if you don't know how to treat people. If you don't know how to treat folks and, and, and be loving and kind to people. Your gift don't mean nothing to them. A lot of talented people are unemployed right now. Because they're mean. A lot of gifted people are sitting at home waiting for some, somebody to call them because there, there's no character there. Lord, help me tonight. Amen. And I, it, it'll be sad for me to see so many gifted people in the body of Christ Blow opportunity after opportunity. God don't open the door for you to go before great men, for you to go in there and act a fool. Because if you had any kind of ounce of integrity, it makes you treat people better than they treat you. It, it, it'll make you treat people people that do you wrong you still if you got a little bit you some of us are uncomfortable treating people as bad as they treat us help me lord amen and and if we go back to if we go back to uh, uh samuel dealing with saul Saul was rejected. 
And if you if you can go if you can picture in the Bible time, Saul had the stature of a king. He looked like the king. He smelled like a king. But on the inside, his heart wasn't right. And then God goes get somebody else that don't look like a king, that don't smell like a king, that's short and ruddy, but got a heart after God. He said, David is a man after God's own heart. And he becomes king. Lord have mercy. And listen, this is a warning. This is a warning to all of us that are operating with the right heart. When you operate with the right heart, there will be a Saul that has more than you, but he's jealous of you. Oh, let me talk to somebody right now. When you operate with love and kindness, there will be a Saul, someone that has more than you, someone that you should be looking up to, but they'll be jealous of you and they'll want to kill you. Because that's what happened. David, now David is king. He's anointed king. And now Saul is jealous. But Saul, you had the opportunity. But your heart wasn't right. Oh, that's going to go over some of y'all's head. I don't want to get too deep tonight. Amen. Amen. Let's go to uh, Proverbs 10 and 9. That's where I want to go. I'm going to read the New Living Translation of that. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 9. Hallelujah. 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 And it reads like this. People with integrity walk safely, but those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. Those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. Listen, your crooked ways will catch up with you. And in order to have integrity, and I'm going to talk about that. I got another scripture. People that don't keep their word. People that walk, people with integrity walk safely. See, when you have your integrity intact, you ain't got to look over your shoulder wondering who coming to get, who coming to gank you. Because you done told so many lies, you don't know what, you don't know what the truth is no more. Some of us that are living right now, we're living right. I'm going to say that again. We're living correctly now. We don't look over our shoulder no more. Because we're walking in integrity. But when you a shyster, oh, there's some shysters in the kingdom of God. If you owe somebody money and you don't pay them back, your integrity is in question. And not only do you not pay them back, but you avoid them. You see them coming, all of a sudden you go another way. Your integrity ain't intact. But when your integrity is intact, you can walk safely. You ain't ducking and dodging nobody. You ain't running. All right. But those who follow crooked paths will be exposed. And right now, you see it just about every day. There's another person getting exposed. Facebook Live exposing this. This one on that. There there was a pastor. And and this is. I, allegedly, I saw it on the news. It, you know, I'm the, I just report. I'm reporting the news, but on an airline flight, and some of y'all may have saw it too. A pastor got locked up. He 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 got locked up. He was on a plane, and something was wrong with him, and he ended up in North Carolina. Pastor, he urinated on a lady in the back row. He went out, went in the back back seat of the plane and urinated all over the lady. 
God is exposing and watch this. And, 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 Lord, I love you. He's starting with leadership. He's exposing those that have no integrity. People that have no integrity, people that have no character and ain't doing nothing to change it. God is exposing who they are. I can't even take, I can't even watch it no more. All this stuff of folks getting this on Facebook live, getting up there and they, you, you know, I want to walk in integrity. I want my yes to be yes and my no to be no. And having integrity don't mean you're perfect. But what it does mean is when you're yet, when you say yet, yeah, you'll be there, you'll be there. When you say no, that means no. Your, your integrity is your word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody glad you got some integrity? You ain't crossing every T and dotting every I, but at least you keep your word. Anybody glad you got integrity? And, and Anybody glad you, you're credible? And people that don't have no integrity, they don't want to be held accountable neither. Anytime you find somebody with no integrity, with horrible character, the minute you try to make them accountable, they think they're being attacked. But the reason they feel they're being attacked because they can't be held accountable because accountability is not in them. Because their character doesn't allow them to be accountable. Their integrity doesn't allow them to be in, uh, accountable. Listen, anybody that has character and integrity problems, they cannot be held accountable. You can never tell them when they're wrong. Because the first thing good character would do is if there's a conflict, before you go pointing there, 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 you start looking at yourself. Hold on, let me let me make sure I'm good. Let me make sure I didn't do nothing to uh, uh, bring this. Let me make sure I I I, I it, this ain't me. M let me make sure it ain't me before I start blaming. Let me check myself. Amen. Every now and then, you just got to look in the mirror and say, "Is it your ca your character and your integrity will make you do that?" But when you don't have it. It ain't never you. And that's a dangerous place when you can't be held accountable. And then when you're unteachable, you know everything. The Bible even tells us to examine ourselves. Why should I have to examine myself? I'm perfect. No, ain't nobody perfect. Even the pastor has to examine himself. When things go... And this is something that that I do often when things go awry or when things I, I take a moment and say, hold on, let me look at this situation. Let me make sure it ain't me. Let me at least see. Let me try to see me in the situation. Ooh! All right. Let's go to first John. Hallelujah. Somebody just say, Lord, help me with my character. Amen. You don't want to be in a relationship with somebody that ain't got good character. You don't want to, you don't want to, and, and, and my, my friend Pastor Harden says it, it says it the best. Thank God for him. He says uh, uh, character and personality are two different things. I believe that's how he puts it. Because people can fool you with their personality. But that character, you can't, you, sooner or later, the true character of a person will show up. I don't care how gifted they are. I don't care how talented they are. I don't care how great they can play. I don't care how great they can preach. I don't care how great they can sing. I don't care how great they can dance. I don't care how great they can cook. Sooner or later, 
the true character of a person will show up. And when that character shows up, you better believe the character over the personality. Amen. Let's go to 1 John. First John chapter two. Yeah. First John, I believe that's where I want to be. Chapter two, verse five. Watch this. But whosoever keeps his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. I'm going to read the New Living Translation of that. But those who obey God's word truly show how completely they love him. That is how we know we are living in him. All right? So watch this. And a lot of people mix that scripture up talking about keeping your word it's not keeping your word it's keeping god's word all right keeping his word capital h whenever there's a capital h in the bible when it says his or he they're talking about god so whoever keeps god's word that's who loves god and if you're keeping god's word you can't easily lie to people Can I take about 10 seconds and deal with liars? <laughs> People that lie. Because I, I, I was shocked to find this out, but in my older years, I found out that church folk lie. They'll lie. They'll lie to you and lie on you. Oh, nobody want to say nothing about that. Yeah, I said they'll lie to you and lie on you and the, and the bible talks about a liar the bible says a liar won't tarry in his sight god can't stand a liar god a, a, a lot he ra he rather you just go ahead and just tell the truth no matter how bad it is and there's a lot of folks that miss opportunities because of their lying ways some folks get fired from jobs because they lie. When you would have told the truth, the job would have kept you on and worked with you and dealt with it. But I'd rather somebody tell me the hard truth than a good lie. Hey. I'd rather you tell me the nasty truth than a decorated lie. Because at least I know the truth. I know how to deal with it. Amen. And, and, and listen, folks in church will lie on you. And they'll lie to you. And it'll blow your mind because you don't expect that from the saints. But not everybody that comes into your church door, whatever church you are at, not everybody from the pulpit to the door has integrity. Not everybody is operating in good character. Amen. Not everybody's going to be loving and kind. Some people got a reputation to hold up. They've been thugged and rough and tough all their life. I, and I'm telling you, I'm telling you from experience, if you tell people the truth, you ain't never got to hide who you really are. Tell people the truth. Keep your word. Folk going around here in church lying. Test, I call it test the lying. Telling testimonies about cars that they got and the game never got. I, I know about, about speaking things into existence, but I remember one guy t testified, yeah, I got the car, and, and I was like, where the car at? Oh, no, I ain't get it. Uh, 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 I was just saying, that, but it's coming. It ain't never came. Stop lying. 
You know, because that that says something about your character. You can't be a, a what what they call it. Some folks lie like a rug, and you can't be a liar and want to get up and minister to people. Some folks lie on God. That's why I said keep keep His word. Those are the folks that really love God. That keep His word. Keep God's word. Amen. Let me go to, uh, let, while I'm dealing with these liars, let me go ahead and deal with them. Uh, chapter 12, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Somebody be putting these scriptures up there. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. And some of y'all, there's some relationships that didn't quite work because God knew the integrity of the person and would not let you get involved with it. Some folks is lying while they dating, if they and then they lying while they engage, and if they doing that, they're gonna lie while they marry. You better thank God some folks he didn't let you get linked up with. Because God saw the heart of the person. All right. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22. Somebody ain't gonna like this, but I'm gonna read it anyway. Lying lips. Are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Let me read you read that to you like I'm from Brooklyn, Colvin Avenue. Liars are an abomination to the Lord. But those that tell the truth delight in him. You see that? Liars are an abomination. Lying lips. And that's why we got to deal with this tonight because there's a lot of gifted people that can't get over the hump because they're gifted with no integrity. And then all of a sudden, somebody that's not as gifted Gets all of the opportunities because God is looking at the heart. You can't go around here lying to everybody and and, and falsifying, you know, telling all kinds of lies. And I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not talking about, you know, little joke and playful thing. I'm talking about lies that will ruin somebody's life. Your integrity is in question forever. But if you're if you're if you're honest, we're the honest folk in church at. We're the folks that are still operating in honesty. I wish I can get some hearts or some thumbs up from the people that are that that have made up their mind. Look, it might hurt, but I'm gonna be honest. I, we're, we're the folks that are just gonna be honest. And as a pastor, I've had so many people lie to me. I, I thought I was gonna see I wanna see some hearts of some folks that's gonna be honest. I, I had so many folks tell lies and, and, and just lying demons. Got a lying demon in them. And then that's what I'm gonna start do doing when we go back to prayer, like we used to do it on the altar, folks coming up for prayer. And you know, Pastor, I need you uh, to pray for. Uh, I'm waiting for God to do it. I want you to pray for my car. That you know, I, I'm waiting for the house. I want you to pray for it. I'm waiting. I said, No, let's pray about that lion spirit you got first. Let's deal with that lion demon you got. Deal with that, and then watch God do everything else. Let God deal with the nasty part of you. Everybody want to be cute with their testimony, cute with their prayer requests. No, no, no. Be real and honest. Let God deal with the nastiness of you. Let him deal with the filthiness of you and then watch what he does. That way, God wants the nasty of you. He wants the worst of you. But if we keep faking the funk and playing around, you, you know, you know you got a you know you got a lying spirit. You know you got problems with your integrity. You know you got problems with your character. Let God deal with it.
Because you ain't going nowhere until it's dealt with. You're going to be going in circles. You're going to be going in circles. You're going to be hitting the rooftop and falling back down. Let God deal with that. Because ain't no way you're going to tell me that everybody that's on this live right now is dealing, uh, uh, is being honest and pure. Everybody got their integrity intact. Everybody got their character intact. And I understand, we, knew we don't want nobody to know that, but you know it. Let God, ask God to deal with you with your integrity. Ask him to deal with you with your character. If you give it to God, then he can deal with it. Matter of fact, you ain't even got to tell nobody. People will see the difference in you because God done dealt with you in your private prayer closet. Everybody don't, you think nobody know you a liar, but everybody knows you a liar. Everybody knows you got bad character. Everybody knows your integrity is in question. And you let God deal with it. And when God, this is what he does. When he deals with you and he works on you, you're still gifted, you're still talented, but this time when you go into the room, something's going to happen. Your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. This time, now that God has dealt with the worst of me, when I go in this room, I'm not leaving empty-handed. You're going to walk in, let me prophesy to somebody, you're going to walk into a room with great men and walk out with partnerships. Hallelujah. Not because of what you got on, but because it's God putting something on the inside of you that they want. They already got your clothes. They already got better cars. They already got the jewelry, but they want a piece of that integrity. They want somebody that they can trust. They want somebody that has good character. And God is going to favor you in these next few rooms that you're walking into. God is going to allow you to walk into rooms, some rooms you couldn't walk into because you were dealing with your character issues and dealing with your integrity. But these next few rooms you're going to walk into, you're going to walk out as a partner. Nobody wants to partner up with somebody that is not integral. I had a meeting today, blew my mind. I didn't know it was coming. I didn't know where it was coming from. And I'm in a room with great men. Matter of fact, the great men came to my room. They came to my office. And God opened a door for me to do something with my record label that I had never imagined. You won't see soon. I, I don't, I don't, I ain't gonna say nothing about it not now, but you. Because when you walk in integrity, not only will you put you walk into great room, God will allow people to walk into your room. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. God will allow people to walk into your presence and start offering you stuff. Because your character. There's people that got bigger names than David Wright, but they didn't call them. There's people that got bigger churches than David Wright, but they, they got bigger and better choirs than David Wright, but they came to me. Because one thing I can tell you, and with my in business be men, anytime anybody that has ever dealt with me in my business of Godfather Records, I deal in integrity. If you don't have integrity, I don't even want you on the label. If you don't have integrity, I had to put people off my record label because their character wasn't right. I don't even care how great you can sing. If your character is right, oh God, I shouldn't say this. If your character, if your character is right, if you got integrity, I know I can sell you. <laughs> That's all right. I'm gonna leave that alone. Let me I'm I'm telling my business. Hallelujah. Amen. And anybody that has worked with me, most of the studios I go into, you ain't going to see black folks in there working, working for me. Most of the folks that work for me in the studios are white. Listen, when your character is intact, God, I, God, I love you. God just dropped this in my spirit. 
When your character is intact, you will work with people that God puts you in the presence of. Some folks don't like being around white folk because they don't, you, you, you know, no, nah, nah. They think, it, listen, your character, your, your miracle, your favor ain't always tied to people of your skin color. Sometimes God don't 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 be blocking folk out your life because they ain't they ain't from your hood. Don't be blocking folks out your life because they ain't your color. God God might have somebody Chinese that he will give you favor with. Two years ago, we gave away 125 turkeys because the Chinese, I found Chinese, I got Chinese favor. Found favor with a Chinese man. And he came over there in a, in a burgundy van and dropped off 125 turkeys for the community. Me like you, Mr. Wright. Me like you, Pastor Wright. Pastor Wright, me like, I said, okay, come on here. And some of us miss our blessing because our integrity ain't right. And we don't know how to treat people that ain't of our color, that ain't of our culture. Good character crosses over from uh, 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 crosses over racial barriers. Good character crosses over cultural differences. And if your character ain't right. God ain't going to trust you around people to broaden your horizons. How are he going to enlarge your territory if you ain't got you right yet? I don't care where you go. If you ain't dealt with you, you taking you with you, and you're going to have the same problems. I speak a crossover anointing. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Who said that? I speak a crossover anointing that the talent and gift that God has given you not just work for people of your color, but there's be some whites, uh, uh, some Asians, some Latinos that will cling on to you, that will give you favor. I thank God, and I'm speaking this into a vision. We're going to have a multicultural church at New Grace Tabernacle. We got a lady right there now, uh, just joined the church, Sister Fernandez. She don't speak no English, but her son speaks in- English, and he interprets everything she say. And that lady, watch this. I hope y'all can catch this, church, because there's a crossover anointing getting ready to hit Grace Tabernacle. There's a crossover anointing. I know we got folks that ain't part of Grace, but I'm talking about my church right now. There's a crossover anointing because this Spanish lady don't speak no English. Her son had to interpret. She prophesied to me everything Sunday after service. She prophesied to me everything that God showed me this summer concerning our ministry. She prophesied it to the word, to the T, to the color. And if I had that character that, uh, and that arrogance, oh, I'm not going to receive a word from somebody. She don't even speak English. Man, she's a Puerto Rican. Uh, you know, I, I sort of, you got to try the spirit by the spirit. And her heart is right. And God used that woman to prophesy to me and confirm. Prophecy is confirmation. Confirm everything that he showed me concerning grace, which let me know I'm moving in the right direction. Sometimes you need a prophecy not to shift you, but just to confirm you to let you know you're moving in the right direction. Just to assure you that where you're going is where God is sending. And some folks going to miss it. Because they're looking for it another way. You're, you you got to grow your character up so that you can cross over. Woo! I feel the Holy Ghost in this room right now. I don't know if you feel what I feel, but I'm telling you, there's a crossover anointing. Look for God to do something great for you that ain't got nothing to do with black folk. I need somebody to shout right now in your house. Do it, Lord. I want to hear you in Jersey. I want you to shout, do it, Lord. Woo! Good God Almighty. All right, I got to get out of here. I'm over my time. Ephesians. 
Good God. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. I hope this blessed you tonight. And it reads like this. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. This is key. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Oh, my God. God, I love your word. Listen, I'm going to read it to you again. For we are God's masterpiece. And some versions say we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. And I'm going to simplify that for you. We are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long time ago so watch this the work that god planned for you he bended that but right now he's working on you so you can walk in it god already planned and we're not waiting listen we ain't waiting on god to do nothing god already did it we got to catch up how how stupid do we sound when we say God got to catch up with us? How can the Alpha and Omega be behind? He's the beginning and the end. How can he say? How, how can we sit here and say, "Oh, we got"? I'm waiting on God, waiting on God to catch up to me. No, we got to catch up to God. And that's what he's doing. He's working on you because right now some of us ain't ready. But as long as you keep letting God work on you. He already planned this a long time ago. He already planned your breakthrough. He planned your he planned that a long time ago. You his masterpiece. And right now, all God is doing is waiting on us. And when we reach that level where God needs us to be, no, no longer can you think that you can be any kind of way and God put you in these places. Let him deal with your integrity. Let him deal with your character. He's working on you. And the, old, the, old, the, other, the old scriptures say the, the harvest is plentiful, but the labor is a few. It's a lot out there to do, but God don't have enough laborers. And that not everybody is a laborer. Not everybody can do what you do. Amen. And, and, and God is in the midst of working on us. He's in the midst of working on us right now and bringing us before great men. And this time, whoo, this time, God's going to do it right. This time, we're going to do it right. This time. When God brings us before great men this time, it's going to be something completely different. When God brings us before great men this time, we're going to be able to stay in the room. I want to pray for somebody right now that God has been dealing with. Yes, you're gifted. Yes, you're talented. But seemingly, it's not happening. I want to pray for you right now that and the, and, the, and the anointing just came. There's a crossover anointing that's getting ready to hit your life. It's for you. That you're going to walk in and be confident, not arrogant. God is going to walk you into doors and you'll be confident. Father God, I pray right now that you continue 
to let our gift make room for us. But not only will our gift make room for us, but it'll bring us before great men. Not only will it bring us before great men, God, but it will create partnerships with great men. God, work on our integrity. Work on our character. We come up against anything that is not like you that is in us. God, we're not perfect, but we're striving for perfection. So, Father God, I pray right now that somebody that may be dealing with that character issue, that integrity flaw, deal with them tonight, even as they sleep. When they wake up in the morning, God, let them wake up a new person. Let them wake up a whole new person. I bind the enemy right now. I bind that generational curse right now. I bind that character flaw that seems to have somebody wrapped up and bound. God, let us know that we can be better and we can do better. And when we do, God, we want you to open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Listen, I want you to get a $20 seed or a $10 seed, or however you can. So it's Shepherd's Night tonight. I want everybody, everybody to sow something. You can do Zelle or Cash App or the website. I want everybody to sow something tonight. Some of us can sow a $20 seed if this word bless you. Some of us can sow a $10 seed. Some of us can't sow anything. And that's all right too. But your character ain't going to let you lie. Hallelujah. Amen. Get that seed in your hand. And I'm not going to promise you God going to do this or God going to do that. Because you're already blessed. If you're a tither and you love the Lord, you you blessed already. Amen. But just sow a seed on that word. And I'm telling you, I really believe that this crossover anointing that we talked about today, tonight. I believe that this crossover anointing going to shift your life. Some of us, and, and it might be comical. Some of us even vowed that we wouldn't even get into a relationship of somebody of the opposite race, of a different race. You don't know what love God has for you. Uh oh. I'm meddling in somebody's business. You don't know what kind of love God got out there because you blocking out race. You don't know what God got for you. God might have a white man for somebody. Uh oh, I don't, I don't went overboard. <laughs> but sow that seed tonight, and I pray that God blesses you tremendously. Thank you for joining us for Bible study tonight, and and I pray that the word of the Lord blessed you real good. And um, also remember, we are in service on Sunday morning at eleven a.m., and we are in prayer on Friday night. Amen. And we thank God for my wife's birthday. She's celebrating her birthday. Her birthday will be Thursday. And I thank God for uh, for her birthday. Amen. Somebody said, I'm sticking with the brothers. I hear you. But you never know what God, you never know what God got for you. You don't, you don't know what God got for you. You know, God, God might have a, have, have a blessing for you of, the, of another persuasion. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining us for Bible study. Come on, put your hands together. We going home. Pray for traveling mercy. We're praying for Pastor John Davis, my friend in Florida. He's in the ICU, but God can heal. Amen. God bless you tonight. Thank you. Thank you for your seed. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in.
God bless you, Sister Salona. God bless you, Levette. God bless you, Beverly. Bless you, Sister Tasha. Bless you, Sister Diane Kinney, my favorite usher. Bless you, Sister Shalonda. Bunny, Bunny Brown, God bless you. Minister Fisher's birthday is Thursday as well. Amen. And today is Deacon Willie Brown's birthday. Deacon Willie Brown is 74 years old today, y'all. Y'all shout him out. Deacon Willie Brown said he feel good, too. Day birthday is Friday. Bless you, Sister Rosalie Brown. Somebody clapping their hands in their house right now. Bless you, Deacon Parker. Bless you, Mother Meredith. We got birthday cake in the back in the fellowship hall. We got some cake in the fellowship hall. Bless you, Pearl. Thank you, Sister Pearl. Praying for your mom, Pearl. Courtney Young, bless you. Sing Mother Pat Gibbs. That's Mother Pat Gibbs, y'all. 